There are numerous models used in leadership studies when analyzing organizational change. One of the most popular models is the Bowman and Deal Four Frames model. In the four framework approach, Bowman and Deal suggests that leaders display behaviors in one of four types of frameworks. These are the structural framework, the human resource framework, the political framework, and the symbolic framework. This model suggests that leaders can be viewing experiences in organizations through one of these four frameworks. And there are times when one point of view is more appropriate and times when it would not be. That is, any framework can be effective or ineffective depending on the situation. And relying on only one of these frameworks would be inadequate. So leaders should strive to be conscious of all four of these frameworks, especially during times of organizational change and not just rely on one or two of the frameworks. We also need to understand ourselves as leaders as each of us is going to tend to have a preferred framework or point of view. So we should be conscious of these at all times and be aware of the limitations of just favoring one framework. The first framework, the structural framework uh, by Bowman and Deal is where the leader focuses on structure, strategy, implementation, and experimentation. Bowman and Deal in their model use the metaphor of a machine or factory to describe how the leader views the organization. When used effectively, the structural leader is seen as a kind of social architect and their leadership style is analysis and design and following the rule book at all costs. On the other hand, when used inappropriately, the leader will be viewed as a tyrant whose leadership style is in details and they can be very rigid and unengaging. The second framework, the human resource framework, this is where the leaders believe in people and they're very good at communicating that belief. They are visible and accessible. They like to empower their employees. They like to increase participation. They're very supportive and very good at giving support. They like to share information and they're very transparent. And they also like to move decision making down into the organization. The metaphor used by Bowman and Deal for this framework is that of a family. Human resource leaders or leaders that are using the human resource framework view the organization as their family, as part of their family. When used effectively, the leader will be seen as a catalyst or a servant whose leadership style is supportive and empowering. On the other hand, when used inappropriately, the leader can be seen as a pushover or too indecisive when making decisions regarding the organizational change. The third political, uh, the third, excuse me, the third framework is the political framework. Leaders that are working out of the political framework are very good at clarifying what they want and what they can get. They're very good at assessing the distribution of power and interests. They're very good at building linkages to other stakeholders. They're very good at persuasion and negotiation and even coercion if necessary. Leaders that are looking at their organization through the political framework will see their organization as a kind of jungle. That's the metaphor that Bowman and Deal use. When used effectively, the leader is an advocate for the organization whose style is coalition and building networks. On the other hand, when the leader that is using the political framework inappropriately, they can be seen by their followers as a hustler, a liar, uh, whose leadership style is manipulation. The fourth and final framework for Bowman and Deal is called the symbolic framework. Leaders that view their organization uh, in a symbolic framework are gonna use symbols and culture 
to capture attention and communicate vision. When used effectively, the leader is seen as a kind of prophet, and they're very good at inspiring a shared vision for the future of their organization. On the other hand, when this framework is used inappropriately, the leader can be seen as some kind of fanatic or fool, where their style is kind of the smoke and mirrors, someone who communicates a very beautiful abstract vision that has no substance underneath and the vision never comes to fruition. Here, Bowman and Deal use the metaphor of a temple. I mentioned that it's important to understand which framework you work out of and in what context. So think about this. For example, you may use the human framework at home and the structural framework at work or vice versa. I like to look at it like a television and flipping through the channels. So let's talk about, let's use the example of a classroom since we're all taking courses. In an online environment or on ground environment when you're getting your degree, let's say you're on channel one, you have the structural framework and you can see that Everybody in the classroom is there in a set structure of students, teacher, grades, assignments. There's a course syllabus to follow. If you don't follow it, you get an F. If you do follow it, you get an A. Flip the channel to channel two, and you can see that each individual in that classroom is an individual human with their own personal reasons for being there, their own unique passions and troubles and desires, their own unique reasons for getting a degree in the first place. Some of it's for job enhancement, some of it's to set an example for their family, etc. Flip to channel three and you can see any political maneuvers at work. So someone may be really good at writing in the class and you start a friendship with them in hopes that they can proofread your paper or give you tips on how to write. Flip the channel to one last time to channel four, and you see that we all have a very unique culture. At the university I work at, it's largely a military and adult learner population. It's not the typical 18 to 22 year old college campus with a football team, fraternities and sororities. It's a very unique culture. So a leader who has access to all of these channels has more information to work with and different viewpoints to access when working through organizational change. And the leader who doesn't, it's like not having cable. So when analyzing a change initiative, make sure that you look through each one of these frameworks. A change initiative may be hitting roadblocks because it's not taking into account one of these frameworks. Maybe you're following the structure too much and you're not paying attention to the people. Or maybe you're considering the people too much and that's handicapping handicapping your ability to make decisions. Whatever it is, according to this model, it's important to take into consideration those four frameworks.